Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about the future of AI in the media and communication industries. And we're going to focus on the skill of lexicomancy, an approach for integrating AI tools into your content generation. This lecture is designed for students in the digital and social media major of the Bachelor of Communication and Media at the University of Wollongong. All images in this video have been created using Midjourney, and some of the elements of the text have been created using ChatGPT. When I use the term artificial intelligence or AI in the following, I am mostly referring to large language models or LMMs, LLMs, uh, like ChatGPT, uh, and the generative image tools like Midjourney. First, in this lecture, we're going to consider what lexicomancy means and look at the craft of prompting and discuss what that implies. Then we're going to talk more generally about the implications of AI tools as we start to build up our skills in AI use. Then we're going to look at some of the direct applications of AI tools in the creative industries. Finally, in, in the last part of the video, we will finish with some of the more uh, specific ethical considerations for AI tool use in content generation. So let's start with the craft of prompting and the skill of lexicomancy. I've chosen the prefix lexico from the ancient Greek lexikos, meaning of words. So I'm using this prefix to highlight the importance of words in crafting the prompts that drive the output of LMMs. LLMs, I'm just going to call them large language models, <laughs> it's easier, and other AI generative tools. In the future, AI tools and, and technologies might have different ways for humans to interact with them. But at the moment, we are dealing with text prompts. And that's the technology that we have for now. I'm using the suffix mancy, which is a Middle English word for divination, because we're using it in the same sense of foresight and prediction. When we talk about neural networks, large language models and algorithms, we are really talking about prediction machines. They are not really intelligent at all, but they are very good at predicting what should come next based on a large data sample. So, lexicomancy is the craft of prompting with generative AI tools. The term craft is important because when we talk about craft, we mean a couple of different things. The first thing we mean is skill, which is specifically the nuanced and effective application of technique. The second meaning is knowledge, the knowledge present in applying that skill and being aware of what the AI model is capable of, its strengths, weaknesses, biases, and the cultural and contextual implications of its use are part of the knowledge that is important in lexicomancy. The third part of the meaning of craft can be considered as intention. Crafting prompts with clear intention includes considering the desired outcome and potential pitfalls for your approach. Plenty of crafts are accessible, but take time to master and become experts in. I won't be providing you with specific tips or tricks for creating prompts for individual tools. I recommend that you use YouTube and look at discussions of prompt crafting on sites like Reddit for techniques of prompts for various model versions. Any 
strategies that I suggest for getting uh, images out of mid-journey, which at the moment is version 5 or chat GPT-4, could be outdated tomorrow. However, if you do want to discuss your Lexicomancy with me, please feel free to DM me on Discord and the details of how to find me there are on the subject Moodle page. So, like any craft, the craft of prompting involves continual development. It will change many times over the next few years as the tools and the technologies improve and change. By the time that we become experts in AI prompting and are using these tools in our everyday uh, professions in the media and communication industries, these tools will have changed in ways that we cannot anticipate. This means any over-investment in the mastery of specific techniques on any particular tools is not especially worthwhile. You're better off at being a, a generalist and having a generalist approach to this craft rather than a highly specialized and over-focused one because these technologies will change. With lexicomancy and prompt crafting, we focus on developing our knowledge and reflecting on intention so that we, as content creators, learn the skills of effective, ethical, and responsible AI tool use. According to ChatGPT, Alexa Comanza employs words as tools, gauging their weight, structure, and connotations to predict and shape the output of computational prediction machines. I quite like that one. So let's talk broadly about the implications of AI tools as we build our skills in the craft of prompting. One of the biggest and cultural and emotional associations with AI is fear. For the better part of a century, we have been told and shown by Hollywood that AI is going to kill us. From HAL in 2001 A Space Odyssey to Skynet in The Terminator, the machines of The Matrix and the humanoid robots in Ex Machina and Westworld. I'm only going to give you a a brief overview of the biggest and most common AI fears here. And if you're interested in learning further, I recommend the subject BCM 325 Future Cultures, which runs in autumn session. So the aim here is simply to make you aware of these issues and get you thinking about them at this stage. Okay, let's start with the first one, loss of control. There is a common fear that as AI systems become more advanced, we might lose control over them. This could lead to unintended consequences, especially if these systems act in ways that are unpredictable or not aligned with human values. Privacy concerns. AI-driven tools, especially those used in everyday surveillance and data analysis, can intrude on individual privacy. Most AI tools are trained on publicly available information that you can find on the internet. So your social media profiles, for example, are part of that data set. The common fear is that AI will be used to monitor and control individuals at an unprecedented scale, leading to a highly advanced surveillance state or command and control over all human populations by governments and corporations. Bias and discrimination. AI models can inherit and amplify the biases present in their training data. This can lead to discriminatory practices, especially in sensitive areas like hiring, law enforcement, health insurance, or loan approvals. The existential threat. Science fiction writers have often expressed concerns that superintelligent AI, if not properly controlled, could threaten humanity and what it means to be human. Corporate domination. 
A common fear is that corporations like Microsoft, which has a $10 billion investment in OpenAI, the company that created ChatGPT, will be able to assert control over the application tools, the application of the AI tools for its own benefit. There is the inverse fear of open access AI operating outside of governments and corporations and control more generally. Dependency. Over-reliance on AI could lead to a decline in human skills, making society too dependent on technology and vulnerable if these systems fail. A related fear is the de-skilling of humans, as AI tools reduce the difficulty of complex tasks. Economic inequality. There is a significant possibility that the benefits of AI will be disproportionately concentrated amongst a small group, exacerbating economic disparities. This is a practical concern for the digital and social media major because students who rely on the free version of ChatGPT to help create their content may be at a slight disadvantage compared to those who can afford the subscription model access to better versions of the platform. The current, the current free version is ChatGPT 3.5 and the current paid subscription version is ChatGPT 4, which is significantly better. But this is true generally uh, of technologies and software. When you might be using a free imaging, image editing tool uh, like GIMP uh, versus subscribing to Adobe for access to Photoshop, this problem is not unique to AI, but it's also part of the reason why we don't assess your digital artifacts directly. It doesn't matter to us if you film your digital artifacts on an expensive camera or your cheap uh, mobile phone. Rather, we focus on your reporting on your learning. Ethical concerns. As AI becomes more capable of more complex tasks, there will be more ethical questions that arise. We'll come back to this later in the video. Militarization. The use of AI in warfare, including autonomous weapons, raises concerns about the potential for escalated conflicts and reduced human intervention in the decision to use lethal force. Transparency and accountability. Many AI models, especially deep neural networks, operate as black boxes. This means that their decision-making processes are not easily understood by humans. This lack of transparency can hinder accountability. Dehumanization. There is a moral and philosophical concern about the dehumanizing effects of AI where human interactions, emotions, and nuances are replaced by algorithmic responses. For example, uh, you might have seen recently uh, advertisements for AI virtual friends uh, for people who, make, who find it difficult to make social connections between humans. Many people believe that AI diminishes humans in this way. Job loss and role displacement. This is probably one of the most immediate and important concerns about the potential future for AI to automate tasks traditionally done by humans, leading to job losses in almost all sectors of human employment. In 2020, the Future of Jobs report was published by the World Economic Forum, which forecasts that automation and technological advancement will displace up to 85 million jobs leading up to 2025. But the same report also reports and predicts that 97 million new jobs will be created via that disruption. More recently, the IBM Institute for Business Value published a study which concluded that AI won't replace people, but people who use AI will replace people who don't. 
So it's in order. It, it's important to think about the flip side, uh, particularly as it's been represented in popular culture. We have seen again for decades AI, particularly robots, androids, and helpful computers that have been fan favorites in Hollywood and television, including the droids of Star Wars, the AI of Star Trek. You can see it in WALL-E and Big Hero 6 and classics like Short Circuit and The Iron Giant. The reality is that as humans, we all rely on machines to expand our senses, our cognitive functions and our expressive capabilities. In the future, AI will dramatically impact our ability to create content. Although we're still working with early models at the moment, which are still quite limited, we can imagine a range of ways that AI will be able to collaborate with humans to create meaningful and important creative content in the future. For example, co-writing and scripting. As we see in the US, there is industrial action that is attempting to ensure that TV and Hollywood productions don't use AI tools. However, content creation in the future will likely draw heavily on AI for ideation and refinement of scripts. Music production. AI will, of course, assist in music creation for content productions. It can help create melodies, develop chord progressions, maybe even produce entire tracks based on specific criteria. Sound design can also use AI to modify and enhance audio to best fit a particular mood or setting. Video editing. AI will profoundly affect video editing, especially automated editing and bringing together of multiple sources. Elements such as color correction will be heavily automated. Fixing mistakes and errors at the video editing stage will become easier and faster with AI tools. Animation and graphics. Core animation features such as character design will be transformed as AI can generate detailed character designs, 3D meshes and so on based on descriptions or just rough sketches. AI tools will, of course, greatly assist in motion and screen graphic development. Virtual and augmented reality are not yet mainstream content attractions. However, AI will assist in experience in experiences of real-time based uh, VR and AR simulations based on user prompts and interactions. Free, and and we, will, we will see this emerging, particularly uh, as AR and VR are used in training or educational settings. Voice acting and narration. Voice synthesis is still an emerging technology, but it will soon bring the same level of unique emotion to a performance that a human actor can. But it is only a matter of time uh, before AI uh, voice acting is heavily competing with human voice acting. Interactive media and games. While humans will probably still direct the central plot lines for game development, AI will be able to provide adaptive systems so that a game's storyline or core challenges can change in real time based on player actions. This can also lead to more dynamic and emergent NPC interactions and experiences. Personalized content. One of the biggest promises of AI for content creation is unique viewing experiences that will be possible on platforms that use AI to adjust content based on viewer preferences, changing story arcs, and presentation styles. Okay, that was a lot to take in. But now we have a general sense of the implications and the potential applications of generative AI tools for the future of content creation. 
Let's go back through Lexicomancy and take a closer look at the understanding of the crafting of prompts. Understanding prompts means the ability to interrogate the bias, assumptions, and reproductions of historical modes of command and control that are at the heart of the cybernetic systems of artificial intelligence, particularly those that are included in machine learning tools, deep learning systems, and prediction machines. For example, a good proportion of ChatGPT, argues Jill Walker Retberg in 2022, is trained on Reddit posts. Right? We, we've talked about already how AI tools are trained on openly accessible data on the internet. Well, ChatGPT has a good proportion of Reddit in it, particularly Reddit posts with three or more upvotes which means that ChatGPT is aligned with the values of Reddit, which are largely dominated by US users who are typically uh, young, white, American males. However, Walker Retberg also notes that the more a global audience uses ChatGPT, and the more those users engage with the platform, the more they change the values that the AI system is aligned to. These systems learn. Connected to the idea of critical prompt understanding is the act of taking responsibility. Lucy Dowling, Lucy and Dowling, 2023, and Kingsley, 2023, report that some academic publishers have now denied credit to ChatGPT as co-authors on publications. This is really important. The argument is that an author, a human author, must take responsibility for their work even when creating materials in conjunction with AI tools. Recently, we've seen legal ruling in the US where copyright has been denied to works that credit AI tools solely as the author or the creator. There's also a great deal of debate as to whether humans can indeed own copyright over AI-produced works. Now, we can do a whole separate video on current content creation platforms like YouTube and Twitch and Facebook and, and so on and the, the complicated intellectual property relationships between creators and those platforms. The important thing to, to kind of realize there is that AI tools are going to complicate that situation even further and you need to be aware of that. The key point, however, is that responsibility rests with the human specifically the human user or content creator. You are encouraged to use generative AI tools to create content for your digital artifacts in the digital and social media major. However, it is you that must take responsibility for that content. This includes fact-checking fact and the verifying of information. It should be well known now that AI tools like ChatGPT invent materials. The popular term is hallucinate. They are prediction machines. They, they are not intelligent machines. They will pass on imaginary information as if it were real, just like some humans do. This can actually lead to creative, like the, the ability for the, the, the AI platform to hallucinate, right, can bring, un, make unpredictable connections. And so this can lead to creative, innovative, and exciting ways to structure and share knowledge and creativity. But it is your responsibility to ensure the validity and the verifiability of the content that you are creating, especially when you are arguing that it is a fact or real. This component of lexicomancy can also be thought of as filtering. Filtering is the act of removing unwanted material. 
You can't simply just cut and paste the first response you get from an AI tool. Or at least if you do, the material isn't going to be very good. You need to filter, adapt, and craft the prompts over a series of interactions. You need to often train the tool on a specific text corpus. For example, if you wanted to create a short video summarizing this video, you might grab my notes and put those, this, these notes from this lecture into ChatGPT and ask it to summarize key points. But you are then going to need to take that material and sculpt it, edit it, rewrite it to create your own content. As you go through the prompting process, you can use different approaches, different expressions, different ways to get the tools to generate new combinations of ideas. You can cut out and remove elements from a prompt or add new ones to create, create a better prompt and help you filter out noise, misinformation, discrimination, and dangerous or offensive materials. This is the, this is the sculpting of the prompt. So the art of lexicomancy is one of experimentation and iteration. As you create effective prompts, take notes on what you did to achieve this outcome. Keep a record of your prompt pr progression in a separate document. This is good practice and it will help you explain to yourself later when you come back to it, but also to others how you arrived at the final result. Before we finish this video, uh, with some final thoughts on ethical use of AI tools. I just want to briefly explain kind of why AI tools are useful for creating content for your media projects and your digital artifacts in the digital and social media major. The idea is that AI tools are really useful for cognitive loading. Using an AI tool and putting the, the cognitive load on the AI can really reduce the mental strain on individuals attempting a task, especially a difficult task like creating a script for a video. By asking it to do some of the legwork, putting together some of the basic ideas and so on, you can then put more cognitive resources towards pure creativity and innovation. According to ChatGPT, uh, lexicomancy facilitates rapid information retrieval, idea brainstorming, and content structuring. Another way to think about this is that AI introduces cognitive scaffolding. When you ask it to generate something, it presents a framework that stimulates creative dissent. Right? It is easy to, to ask the, the AI tool to create something and then look at it and go, oh, I don't like that. Right? That's not useful. I'm going to cut that bit out, but I'm going to take this bit. Right? It's easier to, to, to have that kind of friction and that kind of resistance than it is to start from scratch. Rather than facing the daunting void of a blank page, AI content generation serves as a tangible foundation to critique, diverge, reshape, adapt, modify. AI tools can provide a tangible starting point, especially if you resist or rebel against what it's providing you. It can help the ideation and the iteration process. It can help act as a catalyst for originality providing a detailed structure to embrace or counteract, ultimately amplifying the journey for, from conception to creation. All right, final thoughts. Um, ethical use of AI tools is the key to the craft of lexicomancy. This invo involves being aware of the changing uh, environment for intellectual property infringement, as well as issues like cultural appropriation. For example, when you're using a tool like Midjourney, you have to think carefully about using the prompt in the style of. Now, while this is not a technical copyright infringement, if 
you you want to be careful of using the style of a living artist or even a, even a, 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 a dead artist, particularly because of the duration of copyright. However, in the style of could refer to a past historical art movement, which is a, a more generalized thing. So being careful here is not a hard, you know, it, th these aren't hard rules, but kind of guides to thinking about, you know, being respectful um, and operating within the law. Similarly, when using prompts to refer to cultures, identities, social practices, performances, and so on, you need to think carefully about how the material will be interpreted, received, and understood. Lastly, just to reiterate, remember that a, a program like ChatGPT is a chatbot, right? Having a conversation with it. Don't just take the first thing that you get, but start to engage with a back and forth and try to um, develop the response over a series of interactions. Don't just take the first response that you get from an AI tool. Sometimes you have to restate, redirect the conversation, and interrogate the tool's responses. Then it's up to you to edit and build and expand on that raw material. AI tools, at least for the moment, are just part of the creative process, not the entirety of it. This can help you build nuance and develop specificity. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.